what's going on welcome to serial at midnight my name is heath and i'm very excited to welcome jeff from films at home jeff what's going on man hey how's it going man uh good to be here i'm excited i've never done a uh i've never actually done a video interview like this before is channel. that right you've never done you're the like first the one. Oh wow well i'm yep. honored <laughs> we did a we did a collaboration it was like a year ago i can't believe like when i was i had to go through my um i was doing like my best of most viewed videos of 2020 i was like was this a year ago like it legitimately felt like it was like five or six months ago the last year has just but been a blur <laughs> it's been crazy but we did like a, a team up kind of a thing where we talked about five movies we each picked five movies that um we still wanted to see get that blu-ray presentation two yeah. of my i think two of mine got one did any of yours uh if i remember correctly i'm still oh for five. Oh. Yeah, I'm still waiting. I don't know. I mean, I know I, I have to, it was a year ago, so I'm trying to think back. I know. You know, Freak, I know Freaks was one of them, and I keep hoping Criterion will put that out, and they're just dropping the ball, um, or they can't get the rights, who knows. True Lies is still up it's in the Cameron, air. It's Cameron, man. Cameron's holding that stuff. People talk about this, like, once a week at least. They're like, where's True yeah. Lies in the Abyss? And I'm like, well, I guess that's a question for Cameron. He's too busy with Avatar sequels to give that's, his okay. That's everything I've heard from, uh, yeah. you know, I used to talk to people inside at Disney and then they got Fox and it's like, okay, let's do it. Let's do Titanic and True Lies and The Abyss and everything. It's like, no, James, if James doesn't say it's a go, then nobody touches it. So he has to do the work and he's doing mm -hmm. 17 Avatar movies. So yeah, yeah we're, we're just completely out of luck until those are finished. That's some power right there, though. It's like if James doesn't give the okay, we can. I mean, normally that's not how it works. You know, they're like, well, we're the studio. We're going to do this. But everybody, it's like he's got that final that final say so. Yeah, he's one of the he's one of the few. I've heard that about him. Uh, Tarantino, of course, which I think is why some of his have been delayed going to 4K. Yeah. David Fincher is the same way. So with all the work he was doing with Netflix on his shows and his movie that was delayed he has final say and there was one more but definitely those three are like you you can't touch their movies without them being involved so it's crazy yeah so talking about what a crazy year it's been um 2020 for your channel was just like i mean you took off like a rocket and i've got some questions from patreon we'll get to I like i'll pepper them in maybe but yeah. um what do you think, I don't want to approach this. So 2020, it was, in my opinion, like a pivot year for physical media. Um, and I feel like things are changing as we move forward. Where do you see, I mean, you're such a big fan of like uh, a big proponent of high def, like ultra high definition 4K stuff. Where do you see the market? I mean, let's say three years from now. What do you think it's going to look like? Um, yeah, it's it's a good question. It's a question I get a lot too from my channel. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people ask. One of the things I get is, "Well, what about 8K? Now you got the 8K TV. 8K is coming. Yeah, yeah. And 8K, yeah, and 8K is coming. But I didn't like for me three years from now. I feel like 4K is still your peak disc. There's still gonna. There's still so many movies that have to be released on blu-ray never mind 4k that they're not going to get the 4k treatment but yeah. there's so much out there that has that uh chance to make a leap from dvd or even like vhs never got a dvd and might come to that's right there's there's so much of that so i honestly i, I don't i don't think like the the structure of things going to change i think dvds are actually like if you look at the market it's like 75 percent dvd sales yeah, I think that that will begin to shrink a little bit as more people upgrade. But like, 
that's still probably going to be 50% of the market. And I think it's really going to be hard to go into like an eight. I don't think there'll ever be an 8K disc personally. No, I just don't, don't think agree. it even makes sense. Um, and 4K I think it's makes a great sense format for a very for like, small amount. I think it's a great format for sports and things like that. I think it's going to be used more for zooming in and things like that. But as a consumer format, what is Ultra HD? It's about 6% of the market right now. We yeah. hope that that grows, and I'm sure it will, but because it's early days still. But I just can't imagine that the – you see it all the time too, I'm sure, as people are like, well, I can't tell – like for a lot of people, DVD is good enough, right? Um, it has to be financially profitable for that to be any sort of a format. And I, like you, I just don't think – does it exist? Does the technology exist? Yes. But a consumer format that people are going to actively go support, I don't think so. Um, but what about, so what about streaming as we like <laughs> this? Is, hey, let's, let's, let's just clear the next three hours to talk about this one. Um, yeah. But like, you know, Warner brothers is doing this thing where they're doing the, the simultaneous theatrical release with, which I don't even know if your theaters are open. Like my theater, we got one showing a day at 7 PM at night. So. Yeah, we're, um, we're about the same. I mean, we're up here in Massachusetts, so it's been we got hit pretty hard it, things have been pretty much closed uh i know my local amc is open but first of all like what do they show yeah um and yeah it's been like one or two a day 25 percent capacity you know it's it's super limited yeah so streaming this is 2020 was great for physical media but it was also like the huge arrival of streaming as the giant i mean mandalorian's getting I think 17 batrillion views every, like every hour. <laughs> I think um, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So how do you want to like, I am uh, not optimistic about physical media in the face of that, because I know like with all the changes happening at Warner brothers right now, I mean, you look at Warner brothers is doing it. Disney is doing it. Like what happened to all the Fox movies that Disney bought? Like, right. So far, all those Fox movies are just kind of, most of them still just kind of locked away, you know? Yeah. They'll probably so, come out on a streaming service. That yeah. From what I know about Disney and Fox, that's the plan. Like they have a right now, Disney plus doesn't go above PG 13. They're keeping it yeah. super family friendly, but there's, there's plans to launch like this Disney plus, 18 plus or something they're going to call it it's going to be Disney all the after dark stuff yeah something like that that's where all the fox movies are going to go like they're focused yeah. on that completely and some of those movies might end up in 4k and get new transfers and stuff like they're not going to come to disc for a while um if at all and like mandalorian who knows if we ever yeah. get a disc version of that um, from a business perspective like why would they right because they have total yeah. control of it right now it's driving all these subscriptions to that platform a disc is going to sell ten thousand copies maybe fifteen thousand it's like it's not going to yeah. be a huge seller so no i, I think it I, I think the 4k and, and blu-ray and physical media it becomes i think it stays but it becomes a niche thing like vinyl yeah. and you're, you're gonna still sell you know, they'll produce it and they'll put out, they'll be much more like limited editions and mm -hmm. store exclusives targeted towards collectors specifically and like enthusiasts. But, um, you know, your more mainstream stuff, like I think your big Pixar movies and stuff will always get a Blu-ray release and the big tentpole blockbusters. But I see yeah. a lot of stuff that comes out and, you know, you can't even maybe get a DVD of it. Uh, never mind a Blu-ray and it's stuff that's brand new, you know, so it's in HD yeah. on streaming, maybe even 4k, but you can only buy a DVD. Right. So yeah, I mean, streaming, streaming's inevitable and I'm not like completely, I recognize that like I, but what I talk about, and I see this online, I, I've seen it recently with the office. So like when they take the office off of Netflix and they put it on a new service that people may not want to pay for, uh, you've seen the sales of the office DVD and Blu-ray sets go way up. Like I just read an article about it the other day that everyone's on Twitter being like, just buy the DVDs. You don't need like spend 60 bucks and you can buy the whole series. And yeah. so like, there's, there's certain things that are still going to drive physical media and it's going to be about selection and availability because streaming's getting to the point where it's like, all right, I already pay a hundred bucks a month for cable. 
now I pay a hundred bucks a month for streaming on top of that. Cause that's like cable 2.0. Everybody has their own right. streaming. Yeah. At a, there's going to be a breaking point somewhere where people are like, okay, they're not going to have 3000 movies like we do. Yeah. Um, but they're going to collect their favorites. And I think those sit, but it's going to be like vinyl. You're going to go out and get your favorite album, but you're going to stream a bunch of stuff on Spotify. Yeah. So it, it'll start to make its way into more people's homes. Um, and I am optimistic about like, 4k with the new consoles because that just naturally that's i mean i personally think that kind of drove blu-ray playstation 3 coming out with a blu-ray player now everybody had a blu-ray player in their house so and the playstation uh, 2 drove the dvd players too because that was a lot of like that was i remember specifically um B, I worked in a call center when the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox came out. And it was like, that was our DVD player at the time. It was like, oh, it's included. Yeah. The, the, it always drives sales, always. And it helped the, the trends in the market. So, I mean, yeah, everybody's about to have, if they don't already, they're about to have a 4K player console in their house. And then, right. you know, people say, well, my TV, like, I don't want to go buy a 4K TV, but your TV doesn't last forever. And when your old one dies, that's the new standard, right? I mean, that's yeah. you pay 500 bucks, you get a TV the size of a semi truck and it's 4K. So it's interesting the way that technology drives um, the, the market trends. What, what, so what are your friends, like not your YouTube community, but like you're in your life, what do your friends think about the collection? Because we're kind of an anomaly, right? Like in, in the real world. Yeah, no, uh, uh, I mean, my friends, they they geek out over it and they love it like to come to my house and like walk through this room that I have which is just I mean there's an entire bedroom which was supposed to be the third bedroom it's dedicated to movies it looks like a small blockbuster so like people come in and it's like that experience of browsing shelves and stuff yeah that brings back some nostalgia and they're like man I remember like I remember that movie I haven't seen that movie in years well because it's not on streaming or anywhere but you remember it from blockbuster um, so like they they appreciate it I mean they I'm very open about it I'm like yeah I'm a total geek I've got all these movies in my room I collect um, they themselves are not like none of them are super collectors but it's interesting because I get requests for movies to you know hey can I I'm, I'm like the video rental store for my <laughs> friends we don't have I mean there's nothing in Massachusetts you know family video was at least out there in some of the country now they're closing yeah. down there's like yeah. nothing left. So it's like, Hey, I need this movie. I can't find it. And I think chances are I might have it if it's semi-popular. So I end yeah. up renting them out and like, I got to keep track of who's got what family takes them. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're like supportive of it, but it's like hard to um, like get them to invest right now. Yeah. But I think as more people, you naturally are going to have to upgrade to 4k TVs. You can't go to Best Buy and buy a 1080p TV anymore. It's very yeah. hard to do. Um you get a new gaming console, people start gaming in 4K. If they like that, they're going to go, well, I can watch my movies in 4K, whether it be streaming or not. But I think just getting you into the format then makes you start to think about buying discs and building a, even a little collection of 20, 30, you know, mm-hmm. your favorite movies or TV shows. If everybody started to do that a little bit, the market would go way up because I think yeah. it's dominated by collectors right now and not your, your average Joe necessarily. Yeah, I think that's true. And, and I'm seeing we both I'm sure we both see more and more of that is in, in the pandemic times, people are starting to buy what they care about, because like with The Office, I remember when Friends left Netflix, people were like, how am I going to? Wa-? Oh, no, it was specifically when Disney took the Marvel movies off of Netflix. People were like, how am I going to watch these movies now? I'm like, well, <laughs> there's one clear option. Um, right. Have you always been like a movie fan and a and a like a cinephile how far back does it go yeah so i mean i've i've always been super into movies not to this level but you know i i remember watching things like jaws and the original king kong and you know when i'm five or six years old i'm watching those movies the star wars movies you know my family was very you saw I jaws won- at five or six yeah and i was i was on the cape too um wow went to the beach later that day uh yeah that was tough for a six-year-old but <laughs> yeah i mean my, my my parents didn't probably know um <laughs> it was my one of my <laughs> uncles is a, is a huge movie fan and he's still i go to uh, a film festival in boston with him 
every year except for the last two years uh because it got canceled which sucks but we we would always do things he would take us to movies so he kind of ingrained that in us um and then when i got older i i just wanted i was always super into technology so video games computers laptops i've had a laptop since i was like like 20 years now like i had like laptops for anybody did my dad works in it i was very exposed to all this so when i got older and had like adult money um and got a job when i was like 18 i bought a home theater in a box system and it was like 300 bucks and it had like your little speakers and a little subwoofer and it gave you like a little home theater 5.1 experience um and it just so happened that the receiver was a blu-ray player so I kind of just like, I didn't intend to buy a Blu-ray player at that point. And this is like 2011. So I was late into the game. Yeah. Um, but then I got it and I was like, well, might as well buy a few movies and see how it looks. Cause I kept putting in DVDs and I was like, this doesn't look good enough for me. I just bought all this <laughs> stuff. Um, so yeah, I slowly started, like, I only wanted to collect Denzel Washington movies. That was the start. He, he's my guy. So the first one I ever bought was training day. And I was just looking for his movies and that turned into this and nine years later, it's, it's everywhere. So yeah, I've kind of really jumped into it, but I was definitely late to the game. Like Blu-ray 2006, 2007. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I didn't even start till 2011, which is what gives me hope for like this next format. Like people are, people take time to jump into it and find that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've always been, always been into movies cinephile love watching movies it's a nice escape you know so blu-ray one of our questions from patreon this comes from rob um yep. he was was well, he wanted to know what your first collecting format was so it was really blu-ray uh yeah as an individual um i mean my my parents bought dvds when i was younger like we i remember going into stores and I'm not super old. So like 1999, 2000, when DVDs like first really blew up, I remember being like seven, eight years old. And my dad was like, all right, we're getting a DVD player. I heard it has to be widescreen or it's no good. And like, we have to get all the widescreen editions. So we always looked out for that. And we bought like the matrix, like which everybody did on DVD. Yeah. It was like the first yep. one. And so he had a little collection. We might have had like 50 to 100 um so we sort of had those and i always had vhs tapes growing up like everybody did but yeah blu-ray was my first format that i jumped into and, and really took yeah. on yeah okay cool yeah it's true there was the matrix and it was i i think the more you talk i think i'm like a lot older than you and it's making me feel like a grandpa because you're like i'm not super old <laughs> i was like oh i'm i'm super old apparently <laughs> apparently um, people, well people think i'm like 40 years old that's like i don't know it's like common misconception on my channel i guess i like wear a backwards hat and people are like you're a dork why are you 50 years old wearing your hat like that and it's like no nah, like i'm 28 so um <laughs> i still feel like a kid <laughs> how about wear you wear backwards. your hat however you want to wear your hat because that's what makes also you happy and they can shut also true. they can shut up and you know what? Part of it, 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 it's taken on over the last year because it's hard to get a haircut and my hair is a mess. Yeah. So I've got to wear a hat in my videos where I look like Albert Einstein. Like it just happens. I, I understand. I wear my, I am in my forties and I wear my hat backwards sometimes. Good. So I, I hope it do doesn't the matter. Thing. As the no. rock would say, it doesn't matter if you wear your hat backwards. <laughs> um, so oh, I had my next question queued up. What was I going to say? Um, so Oh, we were talking about the Matrix and we we're talking about Blade and all that stuff. Like those were system sellers. Like, and and it, yeah. you talk about the uh, like the widescreen and stuff. What was so frustrating as the old fogey now that I realize I'm in this conversation. Uh, what made us so frustrated at the time is people would say like, "But it's been cropped and it's got black bars on it, and I want to see it where it fills my TV." And you'd be like no 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 you know how when you go to the theater it's not square it's right. you know letter and they'd be like uh-uh i want it to fit my tv so like in the in the 90s they started doing this stuff with vhs laser disc i never really got into laser discs because they weren't really in my budget but they would do the vh like i had uh the untouchables in on a widescreen vhs 
Yeah. And it was so uncommon, but if you knew, you knew. You were like, oh, it's the, the original aspect ratio. Thankfully, we don't have to fight that battle anymore. Like, there's no battle to fight. It just comes in its original aspect ratio most of the time. Um, but man, those were, and now that's the, I feel like those are the same kind of criticisms that 4K is getting now because people just don't really know, but they will. They will. Well, I mean, it's funny because the ask I had to make, I made a video on aspect ratios because I still have people, there's still people that complain that it doesn't fill their HD screen. They want everything to be an IMAX Christopher Nolan sequence that fills the screen. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, why, you know, I, I bought this big screen. Why is it all getting cut off? So there's still like that confusion out there of like how yeah. that works, even as your screen is in. Well, because they're not in the perfect aspect ratio for most movies, you're going to get those black bars. And I, I literally explained it. And so a lot of people in the comments were like, whoa, all right, now I get it. It's like, yeah, like there's nothing wrong. It's okay. Well, you're doing a service because that video and even your video about like why older movies look better on 4K. I mean, these are important conversations to have and you're having them. So kudos um, to Two people basically have the same question. Robert and Vanessa want to know more about your home theater setup. Like how, what's okay. your, what's your system? Yeah. So uh, I've, I've bounced around the last year. I've tried a few different things, trying to figure out what I liked for the room I have right now. I was playing with projectors, uh, but I've settled on just the, the panel for the time being. Uh, so I've got, it's a Sony X 900 H. I just got it a couple months ago. Um, it's 75 inch 4K. It's got a full array backlight. It's not an OLED, um, which people, <laughs> I get crap for not having an OLED, but at the same time, I'm like, well, if somebody, you know, if you want to donate $3,000, I'll go buy myself an OLED, but it's twice the cost of what I just bought for the size. Yeah. So, you know, I, I bought, I, I like the TV, the Sony TVs I really like a lot. Um, so I have that, the Sony TV, I've got a Sony 4K player. It's a U, UBP or UPB, I always mess this up, X700 if you look that up. So it does Dolby Vision, handles all that. Uh, I've got a Denon receiver, which does Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision. Uh, it's AVR2600 is that model. And then my whole, all the speakers I've been working, I, I, I worked with them for a long time. And then we eventually, I just settled on like, these are going to be my speakers um, it's from a company called SVS. And they make really nice stuff. They have, I've got seven speakers in here. So the usual 5.1 and then the two heights for, for your Atmos. Um, and then this big subwoofer, which looks like a military safe or something. It's just monstrous. Like it was probably the hardest thing I had to take with me when I moved. It was just so heavy and bulky. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the system. I don't think I'm looking cause it's right over here. I don't think I'm missing anything. I mean, I've got, yeah, the speakers, the TV. I mean, right now I'm on the, the last gen of consoles. So I have an Xbox One and I have a PS4. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I'm going to upgrade because uh, apparently they made like six PlayStation 5s. So I don't know what's going on there. Can't even get your hands on one. Um, but yeah, how are you going to play Cyberpunk? Um, how is anybody going to play that that's game? It, exactly. <laughs> I, Maybe I've when they finish it. Cyberpunk, we can play <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's when I'll go and start playing that one. <laughs> Do you feel, here's like a sidebar to that conversation about tech stuff. That's an important question and I'm glad that they asked it, but do you ever feel yeah. like you, you lead with um, you, your channel is very 4k forward. You're always talking about like the latest developments. Do you ever feel like sometimes too much attention is given to the presentation and not to the movie itself? Um. Not by yeah. you necessarily, but just by the, there's a whole community and it's like the latest and the greatest, but what do they think about the movies? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I do like, I want to do more of that on the channel and just, cause I just love talking about movies and it just so happened that I fell into like this little niche of 4k stuff, which is great. And it's fun to review, uh -huh. but that's one thing. Like I try to, and a lot of reviews sometimes, you know, I'll be like, this is this the greatest 4K disc in the world? Maybe not. But like, you know, this is the best it's ever looked. If you're a huge fan of this movie and you know it's a great movie that you love, well, then this is, you know, this is the one you should get. So you can't, you know, you should not buy something just because, you know, this 4K doesn't stand up to 
like Mission Impossible Fallout, which is a standout, you know, or, you know, people get get hung up on like, well, it's too grainy. And it's like, but that's but that's your movie that you love. That's your favorite movie. This is the most accurate it's ever looked. So like, don't get caught up on the little things of ah, the colors a little wrong. And at one minute and 27 seconds of scene, it's like, look at the bigger picture here. We're, we're still, we're still talking about a great movie. Um, And so I am, I am trying to do like more of that, but we do get a little caught up and, and myself, I get a little caught up in like, the the technology aspect of it and i have to remind myself too like okay 95 percent of people who are watching my stuff if not more don't have the level of equipment that i probably have so when i'm nitpicking things there's a chance that these things aren't even you know you're not even going to notice the average joe is not going to notice that in this scene the yellow was a little bit too bright and it's like i need to i need to remind myself that we're reviewing this for the masses um as well as that you know top five percent that's invested a ton of money because otherwise yeah. we won't grow the community if we, yeah. if we can't expand that and it gets too like elitist and too like you need to have this tech or you're no good it's gonna die off um so mm-hmm. yeah it's, yeah it, it can balance. be frustrating because people you know you, you want to talk about like like a movie you'll get a blu-ray presentation which we've already talked about, like most DVDs, there's so many VHSs that still haven't made the transition to a DVD. Um, And I read a statistic last year. I don't know if it's still valid, but at the time last year, it was like 90% of what's on DVD has not been transferred to Blu-ray. Now that's going to be like a lot of workout videos and like hunting instruction videos and stuff like that. But um, there's a lot of stuff out there that still hasn't gotten the upgrade. So it's frustrating sometimes when I'm in a forum or something and someone's like, there's macro blocking at one minute and 47. It's like, yeah, but is that important? I mean, but you know, but as movie fans, we do want this stuff to look as good as it can. And so it's this, I just wanted yeah. to take on that. Cause I feel like there's no, always there's, this push and pull. Th- there is. And I've, I've even struggled with it myself. I remember when, you know, the Paramount presents Blu-ray line. So when that first came out, I'm like, these are all 4K transfers. Like, why are they not putting them on 4K disc? And I kind of had a complaint about it. And then I made another video a few months later. And I was like, I take this back. Like, these look awesome. A bunch of these movies have never been on Blu-ray before. And they're like really important, really quality movies. And the transfers still look great on Blu-ray. And realistically, they weren't going to sell well on 4K. So we should just be like, let's be thankful that we even have the HD presentation because your alternative is a VHS or a DVD. And if you love these movies, that's so much better. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, and, and like you said, I'll do reviews sometimes of movies that are only on Blu-ray and people be like, ah, I only buy 4k. And it's like, yeah, but we can't, we can't get into that because 90% of what's on Blu-ray is not going to make it to 4k. So you're missing yeah. out on 90% of these movies. And, you know, the Friday, the 13th collection was a great example too, where like, that new collection by Screen Factory was so hard for them to put together. There were so many rights issues, so many special features, all these new transfers. And people are like, I'm not buying it. I'll wait till it comes to 4K. And it's like, there's a good chance that never does come to 4K. And there's a good chance that this, the rights expire in a year. Yeah. And you have to pay $600 for this set again. Like, it's yeah. always a gamble. Like, yeah, sure, you can wait and find out. But like, there were minor issues with the discs and people were freaking out in my review. And I was like, look, we, you know, screen factory is going to fix this. They love collectors. If you notice the minor issue, they're going to fix it. They came out two days later, fixed it. It's like, it's a great set. Like let's not miss the the hole for the little tiny things that, you know, they missed yeah. out on. So. so you've kind of segged into another question from Patreon. Tim wants to know what are your biggest media home media pet peeves, like packaging, format releases or maybe re-releases what really mm-hmm. what what grinds your gears <laughs> um one thing if, if people watch my channel they know i can't stand when they stack discs um i hate i i got i got sent um this new i work with high def ninja a little bit the website and they cover a lot of steel books so they'll send them to me to just check out and there was a new steel book and it was the 50 shades of gray trilogy so i'm like oh yeah, I'm like not super pumped, not my kind of movie, but whatever, I'll take them. And when I opened it up, I'm expecting a trilogy. I only saw two discs and I was like, 
where did, did I get this wrong? They were all, there were three Blu-rays stacked on top of each other and three 4K discs stacked on top of each other. So it was just a two disc case with all these movies stacked. And it's like, that's just so like, just put a little arm in, put a couple extra spots for the discs, yeah. like just protect them. Cause like as collectors, yeah. that's, we have one disc. If you scratch that disc up, cause it's stacked on top of another or something like we it that's hard. That's tough. And I, I just wish they would take a little bit of extra effort to just make a better package for those releases. You've led me to something else though, which is that there's a whole level of fandom of, of collectors right now that aren't watching this stuff at all. They're just buying it to put on the shelf, still book collectors. And mm -hmm. it's, it's frustrating. Um, I understand buying second copies and stuff like that, but I'm seeing it's the market is kind of going to, as we appeal to collectors who are keeping this stuff going, it kind of, it, we're kind of getting into this realm where it's like baseball card collecting or it's like comic book collecting. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, is it, it bad. It definitely is. And it's funny. Cause like nobody really knows this, but I, I collect baseball cards on the side too. I'm not just a movie collector. So nice. I, I see that world and I've seen what happened with that world in the last couple of years, which has gone completely nuts from where it was when I was a kid. Yeah. And yeah, I'm like, I'm like cautiously, optimistic that we we don't have that happen but mm -hmm. it really is true that uh, you know there's a lot of collectors and this is why I personally like myself I don't really collect steel books or love them I, I care more about just having that movie in my collection and I've never like double bought a release to get a different you know packaging or something yeah but people do you know they want to just have a steel book on their shelf to look at as if it's you know it's a piece of art it's like a baseball card you just want to have it it's it's part of your collection and i just the only thing i worry about is that the industry shifts too hard towards that mm -hmm. and all you know new 4k releases that come out end up being 50 dollar target or best buy exclusive steel books instead of just a 20 or 25 dollar standard release that appeals to more people because yeah that you know we'll still have the collector market going but you're going to start to lose the general public and that's what we need to like to keep this alive, you have to convert more general public into more collectors and mm -hmm. also engage the average Joe. So if they don't and hopefully you turn them into movie bucks, fans too. Right, right. right. And you, ha you have to start to love movies to. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go to your Best Buy and you're like, oh, that new movie that just came out, let me uh, you know what? I'm going to pick it up and you see a fifty dollar price tag because it's some limited edition steelbook. Yeah. It does just turn people off. So it's just different markets. And I hope they keep you know, yeah. catering towards both hopefully so chris wants to know what's your holy grail for physical media do you have an item or a title that you just really really want that's a good question um i can sing a I song mean, if you want to think about it for a while <laughs> <clears throat> i'm trying i'm trying to think of like what what is out there i mean for there's i've got a lot of them now that's the crazy thing is I've maybe james out. cameron stuff you think possibly yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking of stuff that's like out there that I don't have yet, but like things that have yet to be released. Um, yeah, some of, the, some of the James Cameron stuff would be great. Mm -hmm. um, I really want like, I want a Tarantino 4K collection. I just want all his movies on 4K. I think it'll come because he's such a big fan of, he, like he supports physical media. Yeah. Um, worked in a video store, like he grew up on that stuff. So he gets it. Um, and he still I mean, uses a VCR. Did you see that a few years ago? Like he records yeah. things off TV and yeah, it's awesome. like he's, he's as big a geek as the rest of us. So I think he gets yeah. it and, and is going to put it out. I think um, you have to be to, to really be into this stuff. Uh, but yeah, on un, unaltered star Wars original trilogy would, be, oh, would yeah. be nice. That would be good. I have the VHS tapes, which are unaltered, but. Why um, do you think that I'm, those haven't, we, we, there's, and then there's the bootlegs and stuff too, but why do you think yeah. Disney hasn't done that yet? um i think that a lot of it comes <laughs> i mean we can get into rumors on why it hasn't happened right because there's some interesting legal stuff with george lucas and divorces and it goes down a crazy rabbit hole um yeah. but yeah I, I think it's honestly just like the influence that george lucas has over that and the hold that he has on it and i i mean i've heard rumors that they're literally not you know they're not available like there aren't original prints anymore and things like that that he's he, he's either got them and is keeping them or they're gone so 
I'm worried that that's like part of it, that they literally just erased it. Um, and I don't know. I just think, I think Disney also doesn't love to admit that they've done something maybe wrong. So by, yeah. by releasing the unaltered trilogy, you're saying, well, we screwed up the first time. We should have just kept it authentic and original. And I, I think they have a hard time doing that. <laughs> I, you think you might be onto something there. Um, <laughs> this is the last question. And, this is, I don't know if, if you don't want to answer this, we can go around it, but you talk, Will, so Will asked this, you talk about marketing, your background, actually, hold on. Um, no, not Will, I'm sorry, Sean. Um, mm-hmm. Sean wants to know, you talk about marketing in, on your channel. How has marketing played a part in the success of your channel? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think marketing yourself and your brand is huge no matter what you do. Like you should always be, Like, even if you don't, if you're not on YouTube and you're just working your nine to five, uh, you got to market yourself and market yourself and look out for yourself. Um, So whether, you know, you really know you're doing it or not, you're always marketing something. But yeah, I mean, I have, it's interesting because I do talk about like my day job is in marketing, but it almost came about because of the stuff I'm doing now. So I don't have, like, I didn't go to a business school. I don't have a marketing degree. Um, I was going to be a history teacher. So that's the degree I have and ended up, I was writing reviews for a long time and um, working on this website, doing written Blu-ray reviews, started to market that, put that on my resume, that got me into a marketing job. And it kind of went from there. So like I got the marketing job because of what I was doing here. So it's just, I, I actually use what I'm doing on this channel a lot in my day job to make myself better over there and help the company I work for. But then I do take things back from that and bring them to here. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's super important, right? If you're not, if nobody knows about you, nobody's watching. Um, So I try to, you know, I try to tackle all the new channels. And if you ask my wife, I probably spend too much time playing around on (laughs) social media and like the YouTube community section, which has been great. Um, I've jumped over to like TikTok now. Cause I'm like, you know what, let's get some 12 year old kids into movies. Like that's <laughs> yeah. the next generation. Like seriously, yeah. if, you know, let's try to, let's try to build some physical media love over there. And that's actually gone. Okay. So far there's surprisingly people over there who are interested, who don't really know about any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a huge part of the success though, for sure. Like I, I don't think that any of it's by accident, I would say some of it, certainly, I think the pandemic helped my growth this year. Um, Mm -hmm. And just more people became interested in how to watch movies at home and um, buying DVD and Blu-ray and 4k players, because after a certain amount of time of sitting at home, you know, streaming, (laughs) streaming runs out, you're like, I'm out of options. Uh, Where's that movie I love? I want to watch that. I want to watch that TV show. So um, I got a little lucky with that. But yeah, I mean, marketing's, marketing's huge. You have to go out and just promote yourself. And I mean, it's, it's a crapshoot though. I say that as a marketing person, it's sometimes yeah. stuff works. Sometimes it doesn't. You kind of just throw everything at the wall. And if something sticks, that's great. And you probably fail nine out of 10 times, but um, just kind of trial and error. There's no real success formula to, to growing anything. Well, that's, that's a good, uh, I wanted to ask you, so you got it, you're on TikTok, you get, say you got a 12 year old who comes over, he's like, I want to do what this guy does. Do you have any advice for younger or just new people who might yeah. want to get onto the YouTube platform? What's it, how would you, what would you say to them? Yeah, I think the, I think the biggest thing, you know, say you're starting at zero, right? Which mm-hmm. you, you, nobody knows you, you don't have like a, a popular Instagram account or you didn't, you know, you didn't have a website. Now you're moving to YouTube. You're, you're fresh at zero. The yeah. biggest thing you can do is just like your, your personality is a huge one. And just being like being human. Like if you try too hard to be like a reporter and like, a, yeah. you know, some like journalist type and you're standing up there and like giving a presentation rather than just talking to people. I think people connect with like that human element that I hope I bring, like you obviously bring. Um, it's just like people are just zany. People. Like if you come in at like a hundred, you can't maintain that and people are going right. to see through it. Right. So you just have to be like, be human. First of yeah. all, just be, be like yourself. Um, if you are zany and you can maintain it all the time, then great. But like, don't try to be someone you're not because it's going to catch up to you. Um, and then the biggest thing for me, like this is, you know, this, this channel didn't blow up for 
two years. For two years, I was under 10,000, you know, just doing my thing. But it's all about your consistency because over time, things catch up. If you consistently put out one or two videos a week and people can come to rely on that, like they start to come back to you for things. And it's not just like, ah, I posted here, I'll post next month. I might post four videos one week and then not post for two months. Like you're going to lose people right away. You have to be super consistent. Not that you need a schedule, but just that people can rely on you for content. And then as you build it, you know, now that I'm three, almost four years in, there's such a backlog of videos that people are still finding me through that if I wasn't consistently uploading over the last two or three years, even when, you know, very few people were watching, I wouldn't be getting those new viewers off of, you know, who, who knows whatever they're searching right. for. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really big. And then, you know, just do your, do your research to like, look at other channels and find out what works for them. Um, I sign up for like Google alerts, which is a cool thing. And you go to Google and I put in Blu-ray, 4k physical media, home entertainment. And so I get a daily email of like things that are happening in those worlds. And so then you're fresh on topics and, you know, you can make a video about something that's relevant. That always helps relevancy and and being quick to, you know, post about Warner Brothers going to streaming for all their movies this year. Things like that. You're going to catch more viewers and bring them into your more regular content by occasionally posting like a trending topic. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I mean, you just got to you got to be invested, be consistent, really love what you're doing, too. If you're not. If you're not passionate about it and you're coming into YouTube, like I'm doing this as a job and I want to make money. It's not yeah. going to work. Like the yeah. money comes second. Absolutely. Discipline, dedication, passion. Those are great. That's great advice. Real quick, without thinking about it, what's your favorite item in your collection? Probably my Halloween Blu-ray. I got the 35th anniversary Digibook Blu-ray that's signed by John Carpenter. So that one. Was- nice. Yeah, I uh, did. He do that I, in per- like were you there in person for it? I actually had to mail it to him, but I got in touch. Okay. I don't remember how. I did a review of one of the movies, and I think it was a Scream Factory movie, and they tweeted it out at one point, and somebody saw it from his office, and like we, I got in touch with like his, you know, office manager or something, or someone on his PR team, and we were just talking, and I was like, uh, selfish question, but like could I send some stuff? Cause I love John Carpenter and they were like, yeah, you put, put three things in a box and send them out. So wow. I have, I have that. I got a little Funko pop Michael Myers that he signed on the head. Um, and then he signed my poster of the thing, which came with the screen factory release. Wow. So I got a framed, a framed poster, John Carpenter. So that was, those are the, I mean, that's all time. He's, he's top, you know, two or three Halloween. Yeah. It's my favorite horror movie. Like, yeah. that's it that's the best thing in my collection <laughs> he is definitely one of the masters for sure great oh, master of man yeah this has been a blast i could talk to you all day we'll have to we'll have to do something again in the future but thank definitely. you so much for yeah. taking the time to talk to me to talk to the serial at midnight community uh Absolutely. where can people find everything that's going on with films at home yeah so um youtube obviously just films at home is the, is the channel name uh find me on Instagram. It's, it's films underscore at underscore home. Cause they won't let you put spaces. Um, and then TikTok is, is films at home. Um, and I also, I'm pretty open, I think with people. So if you go to my YouTube page or Instagram, you send me a message or people send me emails through, you know, YouTube and stuff. I try to get back to everybody. I think it's important to keep the community alive. So if anyone ever has yeah. questions on anything, I, you know, physical media, I try to help grow the community. So um, yeah, just, you can hit me up on any of those and, uh, hopefully, hopefully some of my people will come over to you and some of your people come over to me and we'll have a yeah. nice little back and forth and keep growing the, going the community together. So a rising tide lifts all ships and this, That's right. we need to raise these ships because we want this stuff around for a long time. We need these ships going. That's right. Jeff, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And yeah, thanks anytime. you. Thanks to you guys for watching at home. So, uh, let's continue the conversation in the comments below. I'm going to put links to all of the places Jeff just mentioned in the description of this video. Click through, follow over there and subscribe. Uh, So until next time, we will catch you later.